This video will cover the following topics on the standard rack, component layout, power and signal connection, and component operation. To access the control system, you will need to remove three panels from the case, the front, top, and back. You can distinguish between the front and back panels because the front panel has an SKB logo on it with red handles and a key lock, while the rear panel only has black handles. Remove the front panel first by turning the two latches so they are horizontal and pull the panel towards you. The keyed lock on the front of the case is for security purposes if needed and will not be locked when your rack arrives from Dactronix. After you have removed the front panel, remove the top lid of the rack by sliding it towards the rear. To remove the back panel, turn the two latches so they are in the vertical position and pull the panel towards you. Do these steps in reverse order to reattach the panels. On the back side of the rack there is an input output panel used for connecting additional equipment and any wireless system antenna. All necessary mixer connections have also been terminated to this panel. There is sound system on off instructions on the top of the mixer mounting bracket that can be used for quick reference guide to setup. On the top of the rack is the 8 channel Soundcraft analog mixer. It will be used to control signal levels of incoming and outgoing sources. On the front of the rack, from the top down, you will find a sound system on-off switch, power strip, CD player, optional wireless microphone systems, an optional hearing assist system, and an optional personal monitor system. There are also some additional options that will not be mounted in the rack that may accompany your system. They include the high gain antenna kit and near field monitor. Now that we have covered the components of your system, let's connect it. Make sure the sound system switch is in the off position and the yellow master volume faders on the mixer are all the way down. Locate the power cord in the rear of the rack and plug it into any available 120 volt outlet. The power cord is connected to the rack mount power strip which will provide power to all of the equipment inside the rack. In the Pelican case there is a 25 foot XLR cable to connect the audio out jack on the I.O. panel to the system audio jack on the bottom of the fiber conversion box. If your system doesn't have the fiber conversion box, this cable will typically connect to a 3-pin female XLR junction box. Locate the announcer's interface in the Pelican case and plug it in using the supplied wall pack. Next, attach it to the Mic 1 and Aux 1 jacks located on the I.O. panel using the supplied 15-foot dual XLR cable. Each end has gender-specific connectors and is labeled for ease of connection. The last thing you will need to do for the announcer's interface is connect the gooseneck, microphone, and headphones. If you want to use a wired microphone with your system, attach it to the supplied XLR cable and plug the cable into any available mic jacks on the I.O. panel. Additional components may be connected to the I.O. panel as desired, but will not be covered in this video. Now that you have made all the necessary connections to the rack, Turn the rack mount power strip on using the button located on the front of it. The last step is to turn the sound system switch to the on position. The sound system switch allows you to toggle the audio signal leaving the standard rack on or off. We will now cover some equipment setup.